Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com and in this video what I want to do is I'm going to create an express API really quick not full crud, we're just going to do create and read with some seed data um, well yeah, we'll do some seed data and um, yeah, we're going to do that real quick using mongoose, all this stuff so let me clear out all this stuff in my VS code and then I'm gonna do a little bonus, just do a quick little mini view front end just to kind of show the, the whole thing. Okie dokie, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to back end, uh, I'm gonna go to express, I'm gonna call this new folder test5, since so this is the fifth in this series of different express things I've been doing. Okay, um, I'm gonna create a new file in here, or new folder, API, and then we'll have another folder for the front end afterwards. Okay. So you guys can see how I'm setting this up. Okay, in the API, I'm gonna go open that in terminal. So let me actually just close all these terminals I have open now. Uh, open this up in terminal. Okay, and what I am going to do is I'm going to touch server.js. And then I'm also gonna make directories, models, controllers, routes. Um, that should be good for now. Uh, make their models, controllers, routes, good. And what I'm going to do is I'm also going to npm init dash y. Okay, that'll create my package.json. So now I can install all my stuff. So I'm going to install notamon express cores.env. I'm going to install mongoose uh, and morgan. And I think that should be everything I need for this purpose. So hit enter, I'm gonna let that install. I'm gonna go hit up my package.json, create my scripts. Okay, so I'll just change this to dev. Dev. Notamon server.js. And put a question with that. Okay, so that's all done. Let's go into my server.js, start configuring everything. So first we bring in our my dependencies. So first we're gonna bring in express. So const express equals require express const um, app equals express const um, mongoose equals uh, require mongoose uh, const morgan equals require morgan const cores equals require cores and actually I should add dot env before all of this I always like to have that first require dot env dot config okay you do this enough times just you, you, you kind of remember it oh and a couple of the files I'm going to create uh, touch dot git ignore and dot env let's make those files and my dot git ignore I want to make sure I put the slash node modules folder and the dot env file cool and then in my .env file, I want to make sure port equals 3000, mongo uri, it's going to equal, let me just go grab the mongo uri, uh, I have it right over here, okay, and again, I'm running mongo locally, so that's why I'm using this URL, not one from uh, mongo atlas which you can sign up for at mongodb.com. Okay, slash, let's do fish. We're gonna be do a fish API. Okay, equals that. Anything else I wanna put in here? Might as well put node env equals development. Okay, so there's, and that should be mongo uri. Cool, so there's my .env, back to my server.js. Um, anything else I want to bring in here? I think we're good there. Then my global variables. 
Okay, and what I want to do here is create const, create my db variable. So const db equals mongoose connection. Then I want to create my config object. So mongo config, which equals uh, that I'm going to look up. Ah, we'll find that out in a second. So I'll just leave it as an empty object for now because it'll pop up in the deprecation warnings in a moment. Um, const, I also want to destructure some stuff. So port, so all the stuff in my .env. So I want port, node env, and um, what's the other thing I have in there? Mongo URI. So this way I don't have to take up three lines. I can just do it all in one line. Thank you, destructuring, for making things easy. Process.env. Okay, so those are my global variables. Let's connect to my database. Okay, so mongoose.connect. Okay, so first is the Mongo URI. Then it's the Mongo config object. And then we put a callback. Console.log connected to Mongo. Okay, so let's test that out before we go any further. So let's uh, node server.js. Okay, good, it's connected to Mongo. And then the things I need to put in the config object based on the deprecation warnings are use new URL parser, true, and use unified Topology. True. Good. So let's kill this. Kill that. Let's try that again. Okay. Good. So the, those deprecation warnings are gone now. <coughs> okay. Mongoose.connect. Nice. So next would be the middleware. Okay. First, I want cores. I want to keep this real simple. I'm just going to let it keep the door open. I'm not going to worry about whitelist right now. So app.use cores. Um, app.use express.json, the parse JSON coming in. App.use Morgan. So that we have our logging. App.use express.static, so we have a static folder. I'm not gonna use it, but I always just like setting that up. Okay, and anything else I need? Okay, mongoose app express, I think we're good. Okay, then here we'll come back with our routes and routers. We'll leave that blank for now. What I will do is I will create a, just a basic get route just to make sure that this is working. Okay, rec res hello res.send hello world. Okay, then let's get my listener going. App.listen. Again, let's be using the port variable. And then on my callback. console.log backticks listening on port port okay cool we got our server.js set up save and it's gonna be connected to mongo and all that fun stuff but again we're gonna be making a fish project okay it's gonna connect to fish um, so let me go uh, first we have to do is create a model for fish so we're going to go to the models file. We're going to create a new file, fish.js. And this is going to have our model. So const, I don't need all of Mongo. I just need the schema and the model function from Mongoose. So require yay for destructuring. A lot easier than doing it over a couple of different lines. 
Okay, I need that. What else do I need here? I don't think I need anything else here. Oh, I do need const express. So const. Um, actually, technically, I just need router. I don't need to put all of express here. So require express. So then const router equals router. That should do it. And then I can create, oh wait a second, this is the models. I don't need the router here. What am I doing? Okay, that's for later. So now I got schema and model. So I really just need to create the model. So const um, fish schema equals new schema. Um, new schema, pass in an object. And we're gonna have a name. And I'll say that the type of a name is going to be string, but every fish has to have a name, so required true. Okay. And then every fish has an age. Okay, which will be a number, and that's not required, so I can just put number. Okay, and that's good enough for me. Then we're going to do const fish. This will be our model, which will equal model and we pass in the collection fish. This is gonna be the collection we're gonna save the data in. And we're gonna use the fish schema to filter the information going in and out. That creates our model. Let's export the model. Module that exports fish. And then that's done. <coughs> we're gonna use our fish model to create our route handlers. So that's gonna be in controllers. So now I go to controllers new file fish.js and controllers it's all fish.js and here I'm going to need the model so const uh, fish equals require dot dot we have to go up a folder then into the models folder and then get the fish.js that's in there that'll put the model that was exported into this variable here fish and I think that's all I need here. And then I also just need to export everything here. So module dot exports. I'll just start with an empty object. And here we'll create our route handlers. So let's create a, a handler for index. Get all the fish. Okay, so const get fish equals rec res. Okay, and that's just going to, and I'm gonna use a sync await, okay? Because it just makes the syntax a little bit cleaner. So the way this works is you put the async keyword in front of your arrow function. It allows you to use the await keyword in your function, which makes working with promises a lot nicer looking because you don't have to use the whole dot then, you don't have to use callbacks. You can just, it can look nice. So for example, I can say const, the only downside is error handling. So what you want to do is generally do stuff in try catch blocks. So try this. And that means if any error happens in that try block, it'll run this catch block error. And that's where I just want to like res.send my error. So if something goes wrong, just send the error as a response. Okay, so then what I want to do is const all the fish, all fish equals await fish dot find and see that's pretty nice I don't have to put a callback after this I don't have to pass an arrow function here instead await says wait for this to finish and when this finishes store everything in this all fish variable okay it's very nice okay so there's our first function okay that's that's the index one and then I wanted to do a create one again we're just gonna keep this simple so we can try to cover a lot in a limited amount of time. So this will be our create handler. Create a new fish. 
Okay. So we'll call this create fish. Async a request. Okay, and we'll just say, oh, I didn't actually send a response here. So res.json. I want to send the status code of 400, so res.status uh, 200. That means everything went fine. Then send the JSON. And I'm going to send all fish as JSON. And I should pipe for the status of 400 here in case something goes wrong. Status 400. Okay. <coughs> good, good, good. Now I'll go finish that over here. All fish await fish, but we're going to create a fish. And I'm assuming that you're passing in the fish through the request body, so rec.body is being passed in as what we're creating. So this will create a new fish and then return that fish into this variable we'll call new fish. And then we will response res.status200 dot json um, new fish is what will send us a response and then here let me add a status here as well status 400 because again 400 is an error code so we have two handlers this one gets all the fish and then returns them as the response this one creates a new fish and returns the new fish as a response I need to export these so get fish create fish cool so those are exported so now we're done with our controllers aka our handlers so now I'm going over to routes to create our routes so new file fish.js so now I need to import those controllers so const get fish again I'm going to structure those get fish and create fish from the object that we exported that's going to equal require um, dot dot slash controllers uh, slash uh, fish.js. Okay, so that brings in my controller functions. I need my I need to create a router, so const router I don't need to get that from express require express Let's structure that from express and then const router equals an the result of the router function and then we're going to export module dot exports the router okay we just need to create a couple routes here so app dot get app dot get or not app dot gets router dot get because it's a router router dot get and this is going to go to just slash and that's going to, the function is going to be get fish that handles that route so again, this is going to be our our index route, and then this will be our create route. Okay, router dot post slash create fish. Cool. Last piece we need is we need to go bring in that router over here so let's import that router uh, const fish router equals require dot slash routes slash fish.js and that needs some quotation marks around it Okay, and that is pretty good. Um, okay, so that means our API is all set to go. So let me run this. So node or npm run dev. Okay, so that's running. Let's, let's just run our test route. So let's go to localhost 3000. 
Let's see if we get hello world. So that's working. Okay. You know, uh, we do want to create some initial data in our database. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some... Well, we can just do it from Postman. So let's just do that. Test it on Postman. I got a... F oh, that's the favicon. Uh, let's open up Postman. I have to do it weird. Oh, let me just get out of Postgres. Q. Okay. And then open up Postman. Okay. 3,000. So again, let's just test that out. That should be a get request. So let's make sure I get hello world. Good. I get that. Let's create some fish. So let's, that's a post. And that's going to be to... Oh, I never actually configured the, the router. I imported it. Fish router, but I never configured it. So I have to go back to my routes. App.use. And this is going to be for any URL that ends and starts with slash fish. And we're going to be using the fish router for those routes. Okay, there we go. So slash fish. And we're going to do a post request. I need a JSON body. So raw JSON. The fish will be called flounder. And this fish will say is two years old. Okay. Because those are the only two properties. And that's when names are a string and age is an int is a number that's what we defined it in our schema so I send that over and it worked see we got a successful creation good now I will just do a couple more flounder other famous fish um, mm, 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 mm. I have to say goldfish I'm just out of names at the moment goldfish and buffer fish okay Cool. So now let's test out the get route. So we know the create route works. So actually all I have to do is change this to get. And I hit send. Okay, and that didn't do what it's supposed to do. And I think I know why. Okay, so it's doing the thing. But I don't think I actually have Mongo running. So I need to go open up a tab. And I think I need to run mongod. So sudo mongod. Mm. Oh, okay, let me run it as just mongod. What? It's not finding the directory right now. That's weird. Okay, um, let me think about this for a second. I will just create a new directory. So let's cd to tilde. Okay. And then I'm just going to create a directory, make dir mongo data. Okay, and that's done. So now let's do sudo mongod db path um, tilde slash mongo data. And just save the data in there. Okay, why doesn't it like that? Okay, it looks like maybe I do have Mongo, Mongo already running. Let's tr try that out. I guess I have Mongo running in the background. Mongo. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, no, I do have Mongo running. So in that case, it should be working. So let's see here. Show DBs. There's fish. So let's use fish. So fish was created. And let's just do a DB show collections. Fish. Okay, so DB dot fish not find okay so yeah there's all the data we created so why did we not get it in here okay so then the issue is my route so let's go over here to our get route fish that's going to be our handler so that's going to be controllers const all fish await fish dot find And res dot status two hundred dot json all oh that's a cap fault. There we go. Okay, so that's fixed. This is why it's important to test. Okay, there we go. So there's all our data. Okay, so we've tested it in Postman. 
our API is created. Now let's create a quick front end using you. Okay. So what I want to do is I'm going to I'm going to leave the server running. I'm going to go open in my front end folder. I'm going to create a new file, uh, index.html. Then I am going to create another new file, um, and you can do the same the same thing, same deal with jQuery. Like it doesn't matter what you're using, uh, it all works the same. Uh, no, no, I want to create a new file in the folder, which will be app.js. So let me just do my normal, my regular. You can do exclamation point, hit enter. There's my HTML. Um, let me copy the CDN link for view. Where do I have that? Uh, then I, oh, here we go. Front end. No, I didn't do it in there. I did it in here. Vue.js. And I just want to copy these. Okay. Let's close all these windows. Okay. So basically, this you can just look up view CDN. There it is. Just copy that in there. The script tag for that. Don't put a defer tag on the view JS. It just for some reason breaks it. Um, and then you do put a defer on your app.js. Cool. So that's in there. Now you just want to create a div. A div and give the div the ID of app. Okay, the ID of app. Okay, and essentially this this is going to be the wrapper for our entire view thing. So we're going to do everything in this div. Okay, and now we go to app.js. Make sure it's the app.js that's connected to your code. And we're going to say const app doesn't really matter equals a new view instance new view instance like that and then everything you need to do for view is in this object it's that's literally it okay so what we want to do is well we need to target a certain element so we need to tell it that it's going to target that app so id of app target that element and then we have a data object this is all our view data and I'm just going to do a test. So hello world. So it's a string of hello world. Because technically, if this is all connected right, I should be able to open up. This is how you test it. I'll create an h1. And then here, I can use two curly brackets. And I can actually inject data from my JS in here. So I should be able to inject that variable called test. And hello world should pop up. So let's test that out. Open with live server. Hello world. Good. It's working. Okay, what we want to do, okay, is we're going to want to have a variable called our data. It's going to, or a fish. So it's going to be our array of fish. But right now that array is empty because we haven't gotten the fish from our API yet. Okay. Okay, and we do want to get our data from our API. So we're going to create a function called. Um, well, we have to first create a methods object. This is where we create all our functions in view. Methods, which is going to be an object of methods. I'll create a function called get fish, and I have to use the function keyword. So get fish, and basically what we're going to do is we're just going to use fetch. Fetch. We're going to fetch from our API. So HTTP slash slash localhost three thousand. Uh, slash fish. So we're going to grab the stuff from the fish. Then we're going to chain off of that once those fish come back and do response equals response.json. Okay, and then I got to invoke that function. And then we'll have the data we can work with. Dot then data equals, and then we can do stuff with the data. But all I really want to do with the data is just make that fish variable so this variable here it's gonna be this dot fish because it's technically view as a class this dot fish equals the data okay so when that data comes in fish becomes 
that. Okay, cool. And now what we want to do, so let me go back to my HTML. We want to list the fish. So we're just going to create a quick uh, another div. And we're going to use a directive from view, which is called v4. And v4 equals for every fish in fish. Okay. I'll just say fishy, just to keep them different. So our array is fish, and then each fish in it will be a fishy. Okay. And what this does, it's going to repeat this div for every fish in the fish array. So now I can do this. I can do h1, and then we can use the fish's name. So fishy.name. Then h2, fishy.age. Okay, but the thing is that I need to trigger that function to get the fish. So I'm going to create a button, and we're going to say get go fishing. And then this button is going to use a directive to use a function in view. So that's going to be v on click. That means it's going to get triggered on a click, and we're going to trigger that get fish function. So let's just see, make sure that's what I called it, get fish. Um, so equals get fish go fishing so now let's go back to here so see now it says go fishing now when I click on that it's gonna go get the data from the fish and once that data updates it's gonna rebuild that array on the HTML see and there you go see the function see basically the chain of events I click the button the click get fish that ran the get fish function which I defined here in this methods object that did the fetch that got the data I then assigned the data to this fish piece of data here and that automatically tells view to rebuild this div and it does a copy of this div for each fish in the fish array ta-da and then I would create a form let's just really quickly create a form to create an, a fish so we need to create some data to hold the form fields so let me go back to my app.js so back in our data I'm going to create a name which is an empty string and I'm going to create an age which is just going to be zero to start out with and those are going to hold our fields okay and okay go back to index.html we're going to create an input and we're going to use the directive v model that connects this input to the data so I'm going to call connect this to name Okay, and again, this is going to be a type of uh, text. And then we're going to have another input. Okay, v model equals age. That connects that to age. Type equals number. Okay, and then we're going to have another button that's going to submit the data. Okay, we've got to create a function to submit the data. So what we're going to do is create another method. So I'm going to do comma here, and we're going to do create fish. Okay, and it's function here, fetch HTTP slash localhost 3000, so same URL. fish. What I should have done is this, but I'm not going to worry about it now. Uh, created a variable with the URL. So I should have done this. URL for the API and then put this in there. So this way later on when we upload this and it's deployed and we have to switch out the URL, I want to switch it out in one place. So then this would just be this.url and this would just be this.url. And then we have to, now since we're doing a post request, it gets a little bit more complicated. So in fetch, you have to pass in the second argument that's a config object to tell it how to make the request. So we gotta say it's a method of post. So it's a post request. 
and then we have to specify the headers which is another object and the only header you have to actually submit is one called oh, forgot a comma okay it's a header called um, content type and content type has to equal application JSON that just tells your server that you're sending JSON data over okay and why is this complaining oh I think this is supposed to be just like one word is that right In here. I think I have to put this in quotation marks. Content. There we go. Because I'm pretty sure the header is supposed to be content type. Let me just double check. Content type header. Content type. Yep. With the colon. Or with the dash. Okay. So content type application JSON. So we have our method, our headers. And then we need to include the body of the request. And the body we need to stringify, so json.stringify, which means we have to turn it into a JSON string, and we just have to put in an object. And again, the two things that Mongo is going to be looking for is the name, which we're going to get from the form, because it's going to be that we bound, we bound the form for the name to this variable here, so this.name. OK. And then age um, this dot age. Okay, and that'll send over the request. So then that request gets run. We get a response. Dot then response response.json, just like before. And then oh, nope. Then another dot then, we finally get the, the data back. Data, but I don't really want that particular data because it's just going to give me back the new fish. Actually, I could use that. What I can do is I'm going to take the this.fish array and push the new fish into it. So that way I don't have to make another API call. So I'll just push the new fish, that, which comes in from data, into that array. And then that should finish that up. So this basically makes the request to create the new fish and then gets back the new fish. And we add the new fish to our already existing array of fish. OK. So save. Let's go back. This should be all working now. So if I type in go fishing, see, it gets the current list of fish. And then if I type in, we'll have a fish called uh, salmon. And we'll just say salmon's three years old. We hit submit. Oh, I didn't do what I wanted to. Oh, I didn't actually put the function on the button. So we created the function, create fish, but we never actually connected it to the button. V v click. No, so V on colon click equals create fish. Let me just make sure that's the name of the function. Create fish. Good. Okay, now it should work. So let's go fishing, get the current list of fish, make salmon, three years old, submit, and see, salmon gets added. I create another fish, and then you can actually see here, the post request came in. So we can see in our Morgan logs, our server received that post request. So it works, there you go, we did it. We created a front end and a back end API. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. My name is Alex Brissett from alexbrissettcoder.com. Have a great day and enjoy.